Hello Algebra 2. Tonight's topic is day 3 of the uh, unit 9 notes and we'll be talking about the normal curve in tonight's notes and also in the day 4 notes. So the first thing to realize is that the normal curve is a bell curve and the average of our data would be in this orange section and then the values that are um, in the lower numbers would be in the red section and then the higher numbers above the average would be here in the um, this orange lighter yellow orange section. A normal curve is just what it sounds it's what we expect our uh, common what normal what we expect our data to behave and what this is sh showing is the probability um, in class we're going to do a wall push-up activity to uh, collecting data and just to kind of review some of these um, words in class but first just so you have them for your notes remember the mean would be your average of your data and the median remember that would be the middle point so remember to find that we will line up our data from le the least number to the greatest and um, if it's an odd number we would the median would be the middle number if it's an even number of data points then we would take the two middle numbers and take the average of the two middle numbers so add them and divide by two to find the median the mode remember is the number that occurs most often in the data Our range will be the highest value minus the lowest value in the data set. And the last uh, definition to remember is standard deviation. Remember, you'll see that as written as um, the lowercase sigma. It's a Greek letter, the lowercase sigma. And it's a measure of how far the numbers in a data set deviate from the mean. Okay, so think, help remember what deviate, so it shows how spread out the data set is. So it's a measurement of how far the numbers in a data set are from the mean. Okay, so the next part is talking about notation. And these are things that we already know, but um, we might not have seen this notation. So the x sub i is, um, is actually the data point, whatever they give you. Um, we'll be using this to find different, um, I, eight different things, like z-score and standard deviation. Um, the mu, remember the Greek letter mu, that will be the mean of a population. Our capital sigma, you guys saw this with the sequence and series, remember that is a sum. And lastly, when you see the N, it's the, in this, in statistics, it's going to be the number of the data points, the total number of data points. Okay, so let's first take a minute and understand how the normal uh, distribution is drawn and then um, talk about a particular example. So the first thing you want to do is draw your bell curve. It is a symmetric uh, bell curve. Um, so I usually start at the uh, top and draw to the left and then back to the top and then draw to the right. So go ahead and take a minute and pause the video and do that. Then we're going to uh, realize that the average, the very top of our bell curve that is going to be where our mean is. Okay. And then remember in the original graph, the average was in the middle here. So 
So within one standard deviation would be the average. So here would be at plus one standard deviation, and then here would be minus one standard deviation. Then within uh, two standard deviation, would more of the data would fall. So this would be the um, the mean plus two standard deviation. Here would be the mean minus two standard deviation. And then within three data, uh, three standard deviations, most of the data would fall. And we have certain outliers outside. There's certain data that would fall outside, but not very much of it. Um, first, let's talk about the average. So the empirical rule will be one of the most important things that we learn in tonight's notes. Now the empirical rule only works for the normal distribution and this is a large population set and you have to be told that the data falls in a normal uh, distribution. So some examples in real life would be um, average height of people, another would be um, birth weights of the, of the uh, population of the average birth weight, weight, how much you were born. You might fall right here on the average or you might, if you are um, born a little bit early, you might be below or if you were born late or depending on um, how much in your genetics you might fall in a certain area. Um, so the empirical rule only is comes with a normal distribution and the thing to realize is it is um, 68, 95, and 99.7. So what these numbers are representing is within one standard deviation 68% of the data will um, be found. So the average, 68% of our data is found within one standard deviation. Within two standard deviation, we'll have 95% of the data. And then within three standard deviation, we would have almost all of the data, 99.7% of the data. So there's only a small part outside of three standard deviations. So in this section, we would just have 0 0.1 uh, or yeah, 0.15% of the data and also in this section. Okay. So this is the empirical rule. It's really important to um, understand. So just to repeat that with these questions, the percent of the data that falls within one standard deviation would be 68%. The percent of the data that falls within two standard deviations would be 95%. And the data that falls within three standard deviations is 99.7%. Okay, let's look at our example here. In 1972, the heights of our rugby players were found to be normally distributed with a mean of 179 and a standard deviation of 7. So again, we, this only can be used, the empirical rule and the normal curve, if they tell you it's normally distributed. Our first step to kind of uncovering how this data set falls would be to write our mean right here in the center. Our, that's our average of our data. So our mean is get, gets written right, right where the mu is and that's at 179. The other thing to realize is our standard deviation is 7. So we're going to be adding 7. So our mean plus 1 standard deviation to get to the what value would be at one standard deviation. So 179 plus 7 would be 186. 
and then we'll add another 7 to get to stu 2 standard deviation. So that would be at 193. And then we'll add another 7 to get to 3 standard deviation. So that would be at 200. This direction we're going to go in reverse. We'll subtract 1 standard deviation, so we'll subtract 7. And 179 minus 7 would be 172. And then uh, minus 7 again would be 165. And last, minus 7 would be 158. So this is showing that 68% of the data falls within 172, the height of these rugby players, 172 to 186. And 99.7% of the data, 99.7% um, of the rugby players, their height falls within 158 centimeters to 200 centimeters. Okay, there's a few questions here before we end for tonight. And that was what I was talking about. So the first one was 172 centimeters and 186. So 172 to 186 would be within one standard deviation, so that would be 68% of the data. And for number uh, this example, percentage of the rugby players between 165 and 193, they're talking about 165 to 193, so that's within two standard deviations, so that would be 95% of the data. The next question is asking between 172 and 179. So that's talking about half here, half of the 68. So half of 68 would be 34% of the data. Okay, now this question's asking uh, in the reverse. If 50% of the rugby players are taller than k centimeters, what would be my value of k? So let's take a look at our uh, bell curve. And if they say 50% of our data is taller than k, then they must be talking about our, our, our mean here. 50% of the data is taller, so our mean, remember, is our average of our data, so it would have to, k would have to be our mean, which would be 179 centimeters. Okay, that's all the notes for tonight. Um, remember, there's a quiz next class on sequence and series, and if you want to get ahead, um, you can watch the next video and finish out um, these two sets of notes. But that's all the notes for tonight. And remember to study for that quiz. And don't forget that empirical rule. Remember 68, 95, 99.7%. Three standard deviations. Within three standard deviations, 99.7% of our data falls. Okay, have a great night.